Good morning again, guys. Uh, today we're going to look at Von Thunen's model. I believe it's actually pronounced Von Thunen, but since it's a TH and I'm American, we say Von Thunen. That's probably completely incorrect, but we basically need to understand a couple of things before we start. Number one, this is theoretical, which means that it's not a fact. So one of the things you'll be doing next week is making an argument on whether or not this model is still applicable in today's society or not. Um, the answer can be yes or no. It depends on how you support uh, what your findings are. Before we actually start discussing Von Thunen, we need to look here because while this is Von Thunen's model, it's also something known as bid rent theory. Sounds complex. It is actually one of the one of the easiest things that we teach in AP Human because bid rent theory essentially is this is the cost of rent and this is the distance from the market so in other words it's this the farther away you get from the central city the less the land is going to cost so it's no different like if we go to downtown atlanta right now and you want to go buy some three bedroom two bath house nothing big nothing fancy in downtown atlanta maybe uh over in i don't know maybe you're looking in buckhead Okay, just north of downtown Atlanta, you know that you're going to pay more for that than you are for a three-bedroom, two-bath house out here in our area in West Cobb. And the reason is land's more expensive because accessibility, because there's a higher demand the closer you get to a city. You keep going out farther, like we own some acreage out in Rock Mart, uh, it, it's going to be worth, you know, a lot less, two, $3,000 an acre. And so, whereas in Cobb County right now, it's about $75,000 an acre. So it's, it, this is something that we automatically relate to, but we have to understand this before Von Thunen's model makes any sense. Von Thunen's model, um, Von Thunen lived in Germany somewhere, sometime in the early 1800s. And what we have to understand is that he lived in an area that was very flat. And so there was no intervening obstacle to stop anything from expanding. Um, and that's why a lot of times Von Thunen's model is most applicable in these Midwestern areas. And a lot of times people say it's like Chicago, because the only thing that stops anything in Chicago is going to be the lake. Everything else after that is very flat, and there's nothing to impede growth. Atlanta is actually like that to a certain extent until you hit um, the Blue Ridge Mountains in the north, or you hit the oceans to the south and to the east. But we're relatively flat. But what it states is that you actually have, this says five. For you guys, I say four. We're going to make it four distinct rings. The interior of this is your bullseye. This is your market area. Like they say here, let's say this is Chicago, or for us, it's Atlanta. So ring number one, the one that is closest to that city, is going to be, what are they called, dairy. And we actually say horticulture as well. They say market gardening, but we're going to say dairy and horticulture. So essentially... It's going to be things like milk, obviously, but then your fruits, vegetables, and flowers. Now, I'm going to stop here for a second. I want you to write something down. Von Thunen's model is based on four concepts, or predicated on four concepts, and they are, and I'm going to talk slowly, number one is perishability. Okay, how long does something last? Number two is necessity. Is it truly needed, and how much in high demand is it? Number three is going to be the land cost, okay? How much, how much land is needed uh, to grow this? Okay, so we got the first three so far, which is perishability, necessity, land cost, and the last one is transportation cost. How much is it going to cost to transport it? So when we look at ring number one and we see dairy and horticulture, we know that they, A, perish very quickly. They're spoiled quickly, so they need to be close to the market. They are needed okay, by a large amount of the population, if not everybody. Oddly enough, they're fairly heavy. They're dense. Now, flowers, not so much, but milk, any liquid, heavy. Strawberries, while they don't look very heavy, they're dense. So when you put tons and tons and tons of them, it goes up. But the other one is they actually don't need a lot of land to be able to produce these different types of agriculture. Dairy farming is not livestock ranching. Dairy farming is just using their cows for their milk, and so they don't require nearly as much land as what would be if you're actually using the cows for slaughter. So that's ring number one. Ring number two, and they don't put it here. We're going to look at it here. 
Ring number two, we're actually going to put timber. This says special, specialty farming, but we're talking about timber. So in the 1800s, a lot of times you had a timber ring around a city where you had, or actually I guess it would be this ring right here. You had a timber ring because think about what wood was. It was, it was the basic necessity of life at that point outside of water. Uh, you built with it. You created heat with it, which obviously allowed you to cook. I mean, it was something that you needed every single day. So if we're looking at those four concepts, it does not perish. However, it's needed. It has a high transportation cost, so it needs to be close to the city. But it doesn't require an immense amount of land. So when you put those combinations together, you end up finding it in ring number two. Ring number three... Okay, or really, it's, I guess, ring number four outside the city right here. These are your cash crops and grains. This is corn, wheat, soybean, oats. Um, I'm sure there's a large number of other things, millet, whatever else they, they grow in those areas. But the reason that they're farther out is, number one, these things don't perish quickly. You know, corn and grains and stuff like that can be stored for long amounts of time without going bad. Number two, they don't necessarily weigh tons. Now, corn is pretty heavy, but grain itself is not extremely heavy. But number three is it is known as extensive agriculture, which means it requires a huge amount of land. And so as a result of that, where do you find your cheaper land? The farther away from the city. And so that's why you're going to put these things in the third ring away from the city. The very outside ring, this last ring, it says is extensive grain farming or stock raising. Well, we're going to say it's livestock ranching, okay? specifically livestock ranching. And the reason is that's the one that needs the most land. And if it needs the most land, where do you find the cheapest land? The farthest away from the city. Uh, people don't necessarily need meat. We know they can survive without it. But it goes back to this idea of land cost and transportation cost. Now, this is a big misconception we have because it's so easy for us Typically, maybe not now to go to the store and get meat, but typically if we need some meat, we go to the store and it's already there for us. However, von Thunen's model states that, you know, typically in the 1800s, the cattle were raised out here or the pigs or anything else, and they walked themselves to the market. Okay, and then somebody would buy them, slaughter them, do anything else. So what that means is that transportation cost is free. And so... That's why we tend to see livestock ranching. So again, we have the city in the center, then you've got dairy and horticulture, timber, cash crops and grains, and livestock ranching on the exterior. And that is Von Thunen's model in a nutshell. Now let's look at one other thing. This is still Von Thunen's model. However, it's got a transportation route. And this is a river, but notice what happens. Everything then gears around the river. Uh, your city stays in the same spot, but what we notice is like horticulture and dairy isn't a nice circle anymore. It follows the river because transportation becomes easier. And so this could manifest itself into what we see in today's society, but we don't typically use rivers. It could be highway systems. So think about how highway systems would affect where things are grown and if they're grown close to the interstates and you can put it on an interstate and get it to the market extremely quickly as a result of that. And so it may not have this nice circular bullseye shape. It may be a little bit different based on the transportation routes that are readily available. Okay, so that is Von Thunen's uh, model in a nutshell. We will be doing some things with it next week and make sure that you are staying on top of all of your other stuff. Y'all have a great weekend and we'll see you on Monday.